it's time for action. One of the great occasions in the sporting calendar. It's the 12th championship final between Cork and Waterford. Cork with eight victories so far, Waterford with three. Waterford winners in 2002, and Donal O'Grady coming back to mastermind the championship in 2003. 70 minutes of action. Sean McMahon, the referee from County Clare from Newmarket on Fergus, getting it underway. It's Cork who won the toss, playing from right to left in the first half, which means they're playing against a light breeze. That's Owen Kelly whipping it away down to the two-man inside forward line. Racing on for it well over there is the midfielder, Owen McGrath, who started up front, taking it away, however, is Wayne Sherlock. Switches straight away with uh, Owen McGrath, got into the inside forward line there, alongside Seamus Prendergast of Waterford. The mind games beginning immediately. Pressure there on Declan Prendergast. Going back to help out is Brian Phelan, operating on the left-hand side of the half-back line. Interesting to see there as well, Ger John Gardner has gone to left half back in a switch with Sean Ogohalvin. Obviously, they, they reckon he has the physique to handle Dan Shannon in the air. And Owen Kelly, as anticipated, has gone centre field. This is Cork's team captain, Ben O'Connor. His sister Mary is watching this in Boston, along with her friends Katie and Alex. Ben from Newtown Shandrum. In his 19th championship match, sending it into the goalkeeper's hands, saved by Stephen Brenner. Partly blocked as he got it away. And the line ball is going to be to Cork. So we're just trying to work out where Justin McCarthy has positioned everybody in the Waterford team. It's going to be interesting. John Milan is top of the right, as anticipated. But right now it's John Gardner from the Pearshig, in as far as Joe Dean. Takes the shoulder there from Kelly. Back in towards Niall McCarthy. We'll have fun with the McCarthy's on the half-forward line. And a McCarthy on the line as well, but he's the Waterford manager. John Gardner, 45 metres out, left-hand side, stroked wide of the target. First wide of the match. John Gardner from the Pearshig is picking up Owen, picking up uh, Dan Shanahan. Dan is starting at right half forward. Gardner's going to cross there to pick him up. Between the two of them, and Dan Shanahan wins it. Racing through. Trying to lay it off. Difficult one there for Milan to take. Flapping at it there was Brian Murphy in the end. It goes harmlessly out over the end line, and it's wasted possession. That was a real hit and hope one by Dan Shanahan out to John Milan. I think Shanahan should have gone through himself. Still no score, two and a half minutes are gone. And as anticipated, Michael Welch is playing on the 40, on Ronan Curran. Over there is Brian Phelan. Tony Brown, by the way, is right half. Ben O'Connor here, playing it forward. On towards Garvin McCarthy, didn't quite make it that time. Makes it the second time. Oh, he scored! What a debut! Garvin McCarthy after three minutes. He whipped it in when the ball came loose and the goalkeeper was unsighted. And Cork at the opening score. There's the man who scored it. Garvin McCarthy from Sarsfields in Glanmeyer. The other number 10, Owen Kelly, trying to return at the other end. No score there for him, however. Cork it away as far as Wayne Sherlock. Up towards Garvin McCarthy. He's a big, big, towering man. Brian Phelan's gone over there to mark him. Hit away by Dave Bennett down towards Declan Prendergast or Seamus Prendergast. O'Halpin. Cleaned outside there to Brian Murphy. Driven away out of danger there by Jerry O'Connor. They're twins in this Cork team. Here's the other half of that. Ben O'Connor. And lots and lots of steps taken, but the referee says that it's got to be a free in. Good movement there by Cork out of defence. This is the goal again here. Just look for the number 10 as the ball was hopping around there. It came back towards Garvin McCarthy. There you are, tennis style. And the goalkeeper badly sighted and between his legs. It's Joe Dean who's uh, doing the free-taking. 
first of the day for him. The man from Killa makes no mistake. It's a great start by Cork. So 1-1 to no score. But then again, it was a good start also for Galway in the earlier match we showed you on the Sunday game live with Galway going ahead of Mayo. And you know what happened after that? 18 points to 1-9. Owen McGrath. Diagonally across towards Milan. But it's Seamus Pendergast who got there first. Inside towards Dan Shanahan. Couldn't take it. Corker vigilant at the back. That's away by Gardner. In towards Jerry O'Connor. Huge one downfield towards Brian Corcoran. The big man in there. Being marked by Declan Prendergast. Down to Joe Dean. Causing some consternation. Three Waterford men on him. This is Corcoran once again. First chance to score in this final. And he's done it. Brian Corcoran from the Arizona Club. Back in the heat of battle. Playing in his 25th championship match for the Rebels. And it's 1-2 to no score. You can see the influence of Brian Corcoran straight away, Jared. The first two high balls in, he's broken them. Got a great point there himself. That's Dan Shanahan. Cor Waterford need a score, and uh, Dan Shanahan has provided it. The atmosphere was strangely silent as he was hitting that one. We're not quite sure whether the crowd were expecting a free out or something, but it's a perfectly legitimate point. The John Gardner tactic is not working well. There's two high balls, Dan Shanahan has won both of them. And you'd wonder why Sean O'Gahalpin, who's a very strong man in the air, would be moved away from his natural wing. John Gardner would be much happier on the right. Well, that's something that'll be well worth watching. They won't take long to uh, spot it, I'm sure, on the line. That runs right in there, beyond Ben O'Connor, towards Brian Corcoran, against Declan Prendergast. And Prendergast again commits the foul, and it's going to be another free in. More target practice for Joe Dean. Shake of the head there by Declan Prendergast. Only 23 years of age and uh, still developing as a top flight defender. And the Cork tactic basically is to try and put that inside defensive line of Waterford under severe pressure. The chair, they have the option of the high ball. They hadn't got that in the earlier rounds when they, without Santander Halpine and, and Alan Brown retired, but now they have Brian Corkin and they can let in the ball higher low and he'll compete for it. Absolutely. Dean hitting and Dean scoring. Two out of two. So three players sharing of the scoring so far for Cork. And there's a ticking there against uh, Declan Prendergast from Ardmore, which is very much a footballing area in uh, West Waterford. That's one back there by Ronan Curran to Gardner, to Dean. Let's him run on beyond James Murray, who looks uncertain. Dean making a better angle. Back towards Niall McCarthy, fumbles, and that's enough to allow Ken McGrath in. One man who could drive on this Waterford team. Towards Seamus Prendergast. Dan Shanahan's there as well, but one-handed. Away by Dermot O'Sullivan to space to Tony Brown. The 1998 hurler of the year. Nobody down there for Waterford. Ronan Curran's there for Cork. Plenty of time. Owen oh, Kelly jumping, and uh, that time the referee decides the foul is by Jerry O'Connor. Little push, I think, on Owen Kelly as Kelly was trying to reach up for that one. Refs had a word with the number nine of Cork. Dave Bennett will hit this one. 65 metres out, light breeze behind him. Waterford could do it a score. And he's provided it. Beautifully struck by Dave Bennett. Lovely striking action. What a nice bit of fluency in that. Let's have another little look at the only goal of the match so far. And this is where it was fumbled by Tom Kenny, but Kenny got it forward there. You can see Garvin McCarthy fell on the ground initially, then swung on it, and right between the goalkeeper between his legs, and he wasn't anticipating. It'll be a sleepless night over that moment. moment. Bit of a nightmare start for the goalkeeper and for Waterford as once again it's Ben O'Connor taking them all on, beating Owen Murphy this time and it's over the bar. It's the perfect start by Cork and by Ben O'Connor. Well, Cork are simply flying but only nine minutes gone. Great catch again by Dan Shanahan beating John Gardner. Cork will have to make a switch there. 
Dan Shanahan has got another two points now for Dan Shanahan from two shots at the target. Waterford playing in towards the town end here of Semple Stadium. Great atmosphere in the town from early morning. Indeed, there's been a big atmosphere here since late last night. Lots and lots of fans around the place making a weekend of it. It's the place to be. McGrath is left and he fumbles it. And Cork come forward again, looking really menacing. Tom Kenny rifles it over. The man, man from Granada, Tom Kenny. Midway between Cork and Mallow. He was on his bike that time. Great individual skill, good solo run, great burst of speed as well, but knew how to finish. Broken down there by Ronan Crown, but only as far as John Milan. Trying to go by Wayne Sherlock, and he's fouled him, and it's going to be a free from the 20-metre line. Scoring chances for Cork, eight so far, and they've taken six. 75% success rate. And Ger Ger the Cork tactic on, the, on their puckouts, normally they go for the short puckout, but obviously Garvin McCarthy, he's six foot four or five, and they're using him, they're directing all the puckouts to him. That's come back off the upright there, Paul Flynn striking it. Back to Michael Walsh. Hand pass back towards Owen Kelly, leaves it there for Dan Shanahan. He's still got Kelly available, going for the score himself. That looks good, it's on its way, it's over. It's a great start by Dan the man. But his team is trailing. But there's only a goal and a point in it. He's keeping them going up front. Paul Flynn has gone out to left half forward, a switch there by Justin McCarthy in the last few minutes. Dave Bennett rising, leaving it there for Brian Phelan to come on to. Striking it from the middle of the field, in towards Milan. Couldn't get the touch he needed. Donald O'Cusack spreading it out here towards Jerry O'Connor. First touch not quite good enough, didn't come up for him kindly, and it's going to be a line ball. Well, a blistering start by Cork in particular. Now Waterford responding, and they have a lot of time to get themselves back in it. Gardner, not a good strike. Timmy McCarthy. Here's Niall McCarthy. Might as well give it to the other man in the clan. He's on the right. Niall, through towards Brian Corcoran. Timmy McCarthy was expecting a return. Comes to James Murray instead. Taking lots of steps. They're trying to get away. Expecting to be hooped. Three against one. Murray forced out over the sideline. But the referee says it wasn't a fair challenge. And he's given the free to Waterford. And Cork don't like it. It's not often you see Jodine taking a man out with a shoulder. Here he comes in here now from the side. Yes, you know, I think it's, it's something that's dying out of the game. Any sort of a tackle now is deemed to be a free. It, it just shows you how fired up Cork are with Joe Dean making tackles like that. McGrath's free down towards Prendergast. Breaks down to Michael Welsh. He's put it wide. Didn't look confident in his approach. Not a good stroke. Michael Welsh playing in his eighth championship match today. Known as Brick, by the way, in the panel. He's on the 40, Dan Shanahan's on his right, of course, and he's got uh, Paul Flynn on his left. Phelan jumping for this one. His early was being held, his hand was being held, I think, by Garvin McCarthy. It's a free in any case to Waterford. And Dave Bennett shaping up like he'll take it. 13 minutes into the match. This is the 115th Monster Hurling Final. About 50,000 people are present. Bennett to strike, stopped on the goal line by Donald O'Cusack, very careful not to step over the line that time, Phelan rises, doesn't take it, it's Ben O'Connor instead, setting away at a nice leisurely pace, now injects some more life into that run, making an angle, and that is Ben O'Connor as it comes down off the post and it goes wide, the approach was excellent, carried lots and lots of possibilities, Final execution just let him down. Watch this again here as we look at Ben in full flow. I can tell you, some people would have preferred him to hit it in much earlier. Owen Kelly. Chased by Jerry O'Connor, Ben's twin brother. 
Owen Kelly, second time of asking, in along the end line. A chance and a goal! It's exactly what Waterford needs! Owen Kelly! 15th minute of the match. A great strike by Owen Kelly, but the Cork backline was badly and cruelly exposed by a determined number thin. A great strike and a fine goal, 1-5 to 1-4. Well, what about Cork's defence there? Yeah, you'd expect some of the full-backs to come across and cover him, but credit to Owen Kelly, he showed a great burst of pace, and he's one player in the Waterford team this year, I think, who's improved out of all recognition. He had a great year in his first year, and last year he went off the boys, but he's absolutely superb. It's a lively contest, it's beautifully balanced. Talk about balance, nobody better than Joe Dean. Good response. Third point for Joe Dean, that's the first from play. Well, Waterford worked so hard to make that opportunity possible, and again, it was the genius of Owen Kelly, the Mount Sion man, who took the goal to bring them right back into it. Now John Milan taking on and beating Brian Murphy from Bright Rovers into the centre towards Prendergast. Seamus Prendergast, half blocked down, almost ran on towards Dan Shanahan. Coming forward here and holding his control is John Gardner. Gardner again, ball in play, not any longer. It came off uh, Michael Walsh. Line ball to Cork. The linesman down there is uh, Barry Kelly from Westmeath. Just look at the block down here again. Beautifully done. The Seamus Pendergast has added a lot of physique as well to the Waterford forward end this year. He's a very, very hard worker and an underrated player. You think, you think about that last match that we were working on together here, the semi-final against Tip. Owen Kelly deserved man of the match, he got 2-8, but arguably Seamus Pendergast was Waterford's best man that day. Yeah, super worker, super hard. What a start we've had to this game, 15 minutes gone, we've had everything. It's a great contest. Brian Corcoran taking on the other Prendergast, Declan, the younger, and he's fouled. There was no advantage for Sean McMahon. It's going to be a free in. And uh, the umpire was waving his white flag, but the referee says forget about it. It's still 1-5 to 1-6, even though the scoreboard on screen and uh, also in the stadium has uh, changed. They might as well leave it as it is because this will be tapped over. Joe Dean looking for another point. He's got three in the match. Two from Freeze. Tag on another. Well, any little mistake made by the Waterford backs, if they're forced into the error by the physical presence of Brian Corcoran in particular, it'll be punished. Stephen Brenner from the De La Salle Club in Waterford. Of course, Michael Welch getting help in there. Dave Bennett taking off. Trying to cut loose Dave Bennett. Lovely striker of the ball, but this time, as I say it, it tails. So there are still three points between the teams. Justin McCarthy once again trying to design and fashion a victory for his uh, adopted county of Waterford. A single-minded Donal O'Grady. Terrific job he's done. Took over at a very bad time to take over the Cork team. And, of course, took them all the way to Monster Championship victory last year. Justin was the, the leader of the Waterford squad, as it were, in 2002. One-handed away by Brian Murphy that time. Man with the green helmet at corner back there for Cork. Plays for the Bride Rovers Club in Rathcormac. Where one of his mentors is John Arnold, a man who is a great lover of hurling and a man who could talk for Ireland. Often does. It's notable there with those puck outs from Donald to Gervin McCarthy that Brian Fielding is getting well on top now. It'll be interesting to see if Cork have another option. Paul Flint to hit this one. Well, he hit it well but couldn't direct it. He's looking for a very big performance. He was the first of the Waterford players when the team arrived to go out on the park. Look what's happening here. John Gardner's on the ground. Dan Shanahan is exchanging words with Donald O'Cusack. Nothing terribly angry between those two, but uh, John Gardner's on the ground. And Sean McMahon from Newmarket and Fergus will have to step in and lay down the law. The linesman Barry Kelly has gone in as well. Let's have a look at it. Shanahan on the left, Gardner on the right. Oops. Hang on a while, I think Andy Lee is the only boxer representing Ireland in the Olympics. The list is complete as far as I know. Dan can concentrate on the hurling. I was harmless enough though, Joe. Any little jab. 
Referee is calling them both across, just wants to defuse it. He's an excellent referee, and he'll just lay down the law, say, lads, look, get on with it, no more messing. We're here for a bit of fun and games. It's a game of hurling. I think that's good sensible refereeing, you know, there's no need for yellow card and move on with it. But he's laid down the law to the two of them. If they picked up cards at that stage, uh, later on it could get very, very serious for them and for their teams. Donalo Cusack trying to play the short one this time to Jerry O'Connor. Back to John Gardner. It'll give him a chance to drive it beyond the Waterford half back line into Cork's inside forward line. Not testing the metal of the Waterford back three, however, and it's Ken McGrath getting it away towards Owen Murphy, swinging at it one hand, stayed in play. John Milan with the shave in head. The De La Salle flyer from Waterford. Great score by John Milan. 3-1 in last year's Munster final. The day he finished on the losing team, his first of the day here. As he beat the court cover, two men were after him, powerless to catch up with him. And straight between the posts to put just uh, two between them. Midway through this first half, Timmy McCarthy catching it, taking on Tony Brown. That's what he's very much in there for, to break open the Waterford half-back line. Now, can he release it quickly? Going at himself, still McCarthy, very single-minded. He did very well to get a free out of all of that. As I'm sure many of the Cork fans were saying, come on, lay it off, pass it to somebody. He took on everybody and Waterford were goaded into dragging him back and they concede the free from 20 metres, which is more or less as good as conceding a point. Joe Dean once again. Ken McGrath, I think, has been spoken to by the referee. Perhaps there's uh, a requirement for some treatment. He's changing his boots, Ger. Um, well, he's already changed them once before the match to bring on the boots with the long studs. Jodine Miwa, over. Five points for Jodine, 22 minutes gone. 1 8 to 1 5. Cork are going to be a lot happier at this stage, playing against a fairly stiffish breeze. It's picking up, and you know, they'll be delighted to be three points ahead at this stage. And thankfully, the uh, rain has stayed away for this part of the match anyway, this part of the afternoon. The change of boots. Ken McGrath, the player in shot. One of the interesting statistics against Justin McCarthy's team is that Cork have only been awarded four frees in the game so far, and they have uh, taken those and put them over the bar. Four from four. John Milan, meanwhile, taking on Brian Murphy. Here with O'Sullivan's back there. He relishes the challenge. Player for the big occasion. Big man. Another big man. Ken McGrath, son of Pat, who was a great water for her himself. Up to Joe Dean. The impish Dean taking on... Oh, and Kelly. Kelly got in, but the referee didn't like the nature of the challenge, the slapdown challenge, and it's going to be another free in, and the referee is going to speak to Owen Kelly, goal scorer after 15 minutes for Waterford. Again, the referee is saying, come on, lads, I'm giving you lots and lots of warnings. I'm sure he's uh, ticked his number. This is it again, Joe Dean going flying forward and the challenge a bit of a clothesline job with a hurley right across the neck it's often hard to make a tackle on a small player you tend to come in in around the neck like that and again nothing too malicious but Owen Kelly was involved after the after the Dan Shannon incident a few moments ago so you want to be careful well Waterford have simply got to stop conceding freeze freeze in situations like this Dean is four from four going into this. He's now five from five from freeze. And that is his sixth point of the game. One of his points coming from play. Take a look at the challenge again here. It looked uh, nasty. Referee in quick to finalise Waterford. No booking, none so far in the match. But the referee's patience will, run, will wear thin pretty soon. That's Jerry O'Connor up towards his brother Ben. 
Taking on Brian Phelan. Phelan does well. Brian Corcoran's about as well. Waterford trying to get it out of danger. James Murray in difficulty. Coming forward here is Niall McCarthy. He's a bustler. They get it forward. Brian Corcoran's after it. A favourable bounce that time. The angle shot, and it's a brilliant score by Brian Corcoran. The man who has been hurler of the year twice and has been out of hurling for most of the last three years. Two from two from Corcoran. Hurler of the year in 1992 and hurler of the year again when Cork last won the All-Ireland in 1999. Well, it's really putting it up to Waterford here. Many, many people said they would win this game. They may yet. Kelly, two against one inside. Shanahan's the one inside. He has it. He scores! Dan Shanahan has now scored six goals in the Munster Championship. What a display by Dan. It was two against one, you know, watch it again here as the ball was lobbed in by Owen Kelly, dropped in invitingly, and Dan rose up confidently, beat Dermot O'Sullivan and walloped it beyond Donald O'Cusack. 1-10 to 2-5. That's 13 against 11. Back come Cork and Tom Kenny, his second point. That's interesting because twice Waterford have scored goals and twice Cork in the very next attack have come up and got points. Jeremy, I'm amazed that, Dan, that John Gardner is still on Dan Shannon. That's a goal and three points now. And Dan Shannon has probably guaranteed himself an all-star with this. It's like, it's like the, every other game this year, the Limerick game again, it's Groundhog Day. Nobody has ever guaranteed an all-star. <laughs> you should be around at the selection committees. <laughs> Tony Brown. Oh, John Milan there, he's furious with the referee now because he got a blow on the hand from Brian Murphy. There was no free given, and Cork counter-attack, and Jerry O'Connor getting it up there as far as Garvin McCarthy in touch Brian Corcoran against Declan Prendergast. Prendergast Hurley gets there first, out to Owen Murphy in the gold helmet. Sun comes out, beautiful afternoon, great game, a cracking match. Two great hurling teams, Ken McGraw, strike you! Wow, you won't see any better. He was a hundred yards out. What a point! Two between them, 111 14, 2 6 is 12. Cork still leading in a gripping contest, which we hope you're enjoying. Coming to you live on the Sunday game at Simple Stadium in Thurless, the home of hurling. No matter who's involved, all of the counties in Munster will tell you the place to play the final is here. Dan Shanahan up against John Gardner, who pushes. He's having a rough day. No switch being made just yet. The obvious switch, of course, is to, as uh, Michael Dagner was saying earlier, to bring across Sean Ogohalpine. I think they might just about be making that switch now because Sean Ogg has walked across onto Don Shanahan. Free to Waterford. Paul Flynn has taken over the freeze. I think they want to his, get his confidence going, get him scoring. He's up for it, you can be sure. Well struck by Paul Flynn, the Valley Gunner. First pointed free. And it's 1-11 to 2-7. John Mullan and Michael Welch have done a switch now. That'll be interesting to see how that pans out. So 111, 14 points to 27, 13. Garvin McCarthy challenging here with Brian Phelan. Drops down to a Waterford man, to Owen Kelly, who's everywhere. Lob the ball in for the second goal for Waterford. That's Seamus Prendergast, blocked down, comes out here to the centre. Brian Murphy getting it away. Tom Kenny. Pressure there on Kenny, and it's uh, paid off for Dave Bennett. The strike not quite inch perfect, just a little bit outside the right hand upright there, Dave Bennett. When you think about going into this match, in the last three games, Dan Shanahan had scored six goals and four points. That includes the league final loss to Galway, and a goal and three today. So that's what, seven goals and seven points for the big number 11 of Waterford. He's on fire. Joe Dean at the other end. Brian Corcoran, hand passed outside. Jerry O'Connor waiting for it. Jerry settling himself, going for the strike, and he gets the point. 
Kent. Jerry O'Connor from Newton Chandram in North Cork, the current club champions. 112 to 2 7. The game is flying and only 29 minutes gone. Dave Bennett onto it. It's a wonderful contest, a great monster final. Paul Flynn taking David O'Sullivan this way and that, steadying himself, making a better angle. It's great shooting and it's a second for Paul Flynn. Let's hope they can keep going at this pace. Yeah, I, I think Paul Flynn is much more effective in near the goals. He, he doesn't have the pace to play out the field and John Milan has gone out the field now and that'll suit him and might bring him into the game. This is where Waterford drag themselves back into it once again to within a point of Cork. Cork are playing into the wind now and I think that's suiting them because the ball is dropping short and they're leaving loads of room for the full forward line. But they're in trouble on the puck out. I don't know what they're going to do with the wind in the second half. They're losing all the puck outs now. At this As day. you say, they've lost another one here. Michael Phelan, it was touched after that by Garvin McCarthy. It'll be a line ball to Waterford. Five minutes to go to half time. A game of great pace, great fluency, great artistry as well. Wonderful scores from terrific individual duels all over the park. And when you're sipping your tea in the midst of winter and you've got nothing other than showers to look out at and you're dreaming of the summer, well, this is what you think about being here. The sun's out, the teams are out, and the game is flying. Towards John Milan, cleverly lets it run on beyond Brian Murphy. Milan looking for an equaliser for Waterford. Four men are on him and he takes too many steps and it's a free out. The fans are on their feet and John Milan with a puzzled expression on his face. He was expecting to get a free in that time. Sean McMahon wasn't buying it. Let's have a check on uh, a possession stat which uh, we have for you here. And it's 53% for Cork, 47 for Waterford. But only a point between them, I think. 112 is 15, 28, 14. And this time it's a free in for Cork. Ben O'Connor winning the free. Things are going nicely for them. But they're still a bit porous at the back. So this to stretch the lead. But let's have a look at this again. John Mullan here. And uh, he was fouled, it appeared to me, by Tom Kenny. He got nothing out of it. And the Waterford fans will be very, very unhappy. He's certainly receiving plenty of attention when he gets every time he gets the ball. And I think Waterford and Field Cork have got a couple of 50 50 frees up, up the other end, you know, whereas that looked a free to me. I didn't see too many steps there. It certainly did. Joe Dean to hit. He's on fire. He's got his seventh point of the match. Six of them coming from freeze. And the more Waterford concede freeze in those kind of situations, the more confident the little man from Killer is going to get. Just 27 years of age, Joe Dean. He's been around since 1996. And Cork were trounced at Porky Cueve by Limerick that year in the first round of the Munster. In the middle of the field, trying to win the duel here is Tom Kenny. Forward there by Wayne Sherlock. Just getting it out as far as Jerry O'Connor. People have been saying for years the place to play him is midfield. This is his big day. It's Waterford's big day as well. Owen oh, Kelly striking. And that has carried to the right. And the inside forwards are furious with him there. They feel that Kelly should have dropped it into either Owen McGrath, who's waiting in front of goal, and Paul Flynn was there as well. Bad judgment by the number 10 this time. And one minute of added time to be played at the end of the 35. So we've got about another two and a half minutes before the half-time whistle. Kelly beaten for it this time by Niall McCarthy and he wrestles him to the ground. Not much doubt about this challenge. The referee is uh, again lecturing. There's a Waterford player down, as you can see, scoring chances. 19 to 17. 19 chances for Waterford in the blue and yellow ball on the right-hand side. That's Tony Brown who's down injured. Well, he's one player whose influence Waterford could not afford to lose on a crucial day like this. He's playing in his 25th championship match. And uh, Justin McCarthy realises what a truly gifted performer he's got in Brown. Towards the end of a wonderful career, he's made the transition from midfield back to half-back. 
during the league he was playing centre half but that was only by way of keeping the seat warm until Ken McGrath the captain was recovered from injury and then they have fitted in seamlessly into a newly constructed half back line and it's worked well well there's got to be another free so Joe Dean who is uh, a total of seven from seven from his shots so far, but in fact it's Ben O'Connor who's going to take this one. It's further out. Looks okay. The umpires look at it and say yes. Man on the right had the best vision. Man on the left waved the white flag. Ben O'Connor's second point of the game. Stephen Brenner to puck this one out. Stephen playing in his 11th championship match. Tom Kenny racing for the midfield with Dave Bennett. Trying to take it up over there was Tony Brown. Happily recovered. Seamus Prendergast beaten. Both there in numbers for near green helmets. It's Jerry O'Connor taking it, looking for support. Getting it there from Garvin McCarthy. Up towards Brian Corcoran. And really putting his feet in the ground there, not uh, being upended was Declan Prendergast at the end of it, a pushing and charging, and it's going to be a free out for Waterford. And that'll take a tiny bit of the pressure off their inside line, their back line, which has uh, been pretty sorely tested. Ken McGrath striking it, getting great length into it, down towards his brother Owen, who uh, struggle to keep it in play, and it just runs beyond him. He had an early chance right at the very beginning of the game, but we haven't seen an awful lot of him since. I think the Waterford forwards will, will get more room in the second half as well, playing into the wind. You know, they're very crowded all through the first half. They're going to be glad of the break. It's been a hectic first half. Super hurling. 114 for Cork. That's some score to get into the wind in the Munster final. 114 to 2 8. That's 17 points to 14. It's been a terrific first half. Two teams, full credit to them. They really went at it. And we had a goal by Garvin McCarthy, the newcomer after three minutes, Dan Shanahan, inevitably coming in with one after 25 minutes, complimenting the goal by Owen Kelly ten minutes earlier. Very little between the teams, bit of repair work for the coaches to do, but at half-time, it's Corco lead by 114 to Waterford's 2-8. Three points between the teams then on this wonderful afternoon at Semple Stadium. And just before they start, let's look at the scores from Freeze. And uh, seven from seven for Cork, two from five for Waterford. So uh, a difference of five there. Three points between them and John Mullan straight away into the action. And he's put it over. What a start for Waterford. Mullan's second point. And Michael Dagnan, you've been noticing some switches that Waterford have made. Yes, Chair. My, Michael Walsh has gone out to the middle of the field and they have a half forward line now of Dan Shanahan, Seamus Prendergast and Owen Kelly. And they've gone for size now in the half forward line and they'll move out the field and try to crowd it around the middle of the field and leave loads of room for Owen Kelly or John Milan and Paul Flynn inside. So the lighter, maybe livelier men are waiting inside for possession if it comes their way. Meanwhile, Niall McCarthy for Cork. Their first attack drops short. Stephen Brenner, who had that awful moment after three minutes of the first half, out as far as Brian Phelan. On towards Michael Welch, now in the middle of the field alongside Dave Bennett. Towards John Milan, two against him, it breaks down kindly for Dan Shanahan. And Dan has put it wide. Wonderful excitement. A compelling monster hurling final. Donalo Cusack from Cloyne. Towards Garvin McCarthy again. And again, the ball is mopped up by the Waterford cover. And Cork can see the free to Michael Welsh. Free from just inside Waterford's 65 metre line. John Milan is after striking, striking Brian Murphy in the face there, which looked like the handle of the hurl, off the ball. Well, let's see if we can got that, because the umpires will be critical here as Sean McMahon races in. I just, I was looking up the field and I saw it clearly. You saw it? I saw it clearly, handle the hurl into the face. John Milan could be in serious trouble. Yeah, it looks like to me, if it was seen by the umpires, he has to go. He's been called aside by Sean McMahon. Two fired up. 
if it's a clear striking offence, there's only one penalty. That's a red card. Did the umpire see it? Two and a half minutes into the second half. Yeah. It's red. John Milan, one of the heroes of last year, when Waterford went close, has been sent off. It's a huge blow. We just saw the tail end of that. Caught for striking Brian Murphy. He knows himself. You can see by his expression, it was a rush of blood to the head, and he didn't, there was no argument from it. Well, now it becomes a huge task for Waterford. They have a free, Ken McGrath, the taker. They've got to remain cool. Both sides have got to remain very focused. That comes out towards Flynn, and Paul Flynn knocks it over the bar. It's his third point. Now it might be his big day to show what he can do to remind us all what a great hurler he is. But Waterford with the uh, difficulty playing 14 against 15. 17 points to 16. Waterford looking for the equaliser towards Dan Shanahan, having missed one earlier on. Taking on Sean Ogohalpine, having to start again. And Sean Ogohalpine masters the situation. Turns confidently. Releases outside to Wayne Sherlock. Fumbles. Cork's backs needing Dermot O'Sullivan, their full-back, to knock it away, but out of play. And it obviously caught a Waterford player last, because the decision is going Cork's way. Well, that is an enormous body blow, as you say, a rush of blood to the head on the part of John Milan, sent off after two and a half minutes of the second half. Justin McCarthy will have legislated for everything and anything. I wonder as he legislated for losing his number 13. His preparation is normally me meticulous. But it's Ben O'Connor now raiding on the angle, striking, and the crowd behind the goal will tell you that it was nowhere near the posts. David O'Sullivan now looks to be the man without anybody to mark. He's standing in front of the other backs, so he's kind of a loose half-back. What you need now from the extra man is that he's decisive. What you often find is that you know, one man might leave it to the other and leave it up to the extra man, and sometimes it causes confusion in, in the back line. 14 men, as we know, have often won in the past in major matches. They're trying to do it again as Paul Flynn gets to his feet. Brian Murphy's against him, beats him that time, can't direct it on target. Well, he's the scorer of three points so far in the match, one of them from a free, that got his scoring going. Long time on the road now, 30 years of age, uh, Paul Flynn won an under-21 medal in 1992, beating Dara, remind you, awfully in that year's final after a replay. And that was the beginning of what people would thought would be a, a great era, a great decade for Waterford. One Munster senior championship since then, but no All-Ireland, that's what they yearned for. Tony Brown, patiently waiting for uh, the line ball. Waterford have really dug in in the last couple of minutes. You can see it all over the field. Their attitude is right, you know. It might be that big of an addition to, to Cork to have that extra man now. The atmosphere of the game has just changed a little bit. Players are tentative now following that sending off. Nobody wants to be the next off, if there is to be. But a caution required. And it's the extra man back there now to mop that up. And Waterford have got to adjust to that new situation. Tony Brown again, leaving it for Dave Bennett. Brown's in as well, spills away. Michael Welsh, hand pass release towards Prendergast. Seamus Prendergast now on the 40, taking on Jerry O'Connor. Another couple of players coming to confront him. It's John Gardner now, happy having switched away off Dan Shanahan. Down, stopped by Owen Murphy, the little man in the corner from the Shamrocks Club. Stopped easily by Tom Kenny in the centre of the field. Probing one in, Brian Corcoran's after the keeper, is happy to see it just go harmlessly out over the end line. A puck out to Waterford. One point the margin, Cork still winning here. Oh, Halpine one-handed down. Acrobatically taking that one, juggling well. Murphy against the other man in the goal helmet, Dean, and it spills away here. Ken McGrath. Now McCarthy, it's tough, really tough going. Dean stepping away from the challenge, preparing himself well, settling his feet and driving it over. An eighth point of the match for Joe Dean, delighting the Cork fans. 
at the town end of Thurles. Here it was again, a lot of bodies falling around that time. Dean, beautiful footwork, and he established his position really well to knock it over. So Cork stretched the lead, but only a little. It's towards Dan Shanahan, beating Sean O'Gohalpine, it's going right again. Watford now need to continue to convince themselves that they can still win. Cork with the numerical superiority and Ronan Curran driving it away down. Touched on by Garvin McCarthy at right half forward. Jersey, pain, uh, the referee penalises uh, James Murray. Furious with Sean McMahon. But it's a free into Cork. Critical calls going Cork's way. And the big advantage that Cork have is the goalkeeper, Donald Locuso. With the extra man, he'll pick up, he's the best goalkeeper in the country for a short puck out. And every time now you can see him, and that suits them because they don't want to be pucking the ball down to the water at half back now. So it's Ben O'Connor, takes them from the slightly longer range. It's uh, just inside, yeah, no, it's not. But looking at it from here, may have tailed at the very end there. It was borderline all the way because we're right behind the flight of the ball there, but the umpire says wide ball. Still 115 to 210, early stages of the second half in the ninth minute. Great catch. Curran again. Down towards Ben O'Connor. James Murray there for company. Runs on here. Murray returning it. Seamus Prendergast drops away there from the hands of Ronan Curran to the other number six. Ken McGrath, the Mount Zion man. Beautifully caught by Sholomo Halpine. What a game he's playing. Released to Brian Murphy, playing in his first Munster Hurling final. Timmy McCarthy, an old stager, he's played in the All-Ireland final of 1999. Angling this one in, two against two, and the goalkeeper there to make it three for Waterford. Security provided by Stephen Brenner. Dave Bennett racing out a good tackle. Well done by Tom Kenny that time. First touch not great, didn't come up for him. Trying to link up with Garvin McCarthy. Looking for support, plenty of support available. The centre half back, Ronan Curran loses his stick. Bad marking by Owen Murphy and Joe Dean. He has the chance of adding to Cork's situation. Scores fumbled by a nervous Stephen Brenner. Made a recovery. Ronan Curran back reunited with his stick. Waterford standing back now in this phase of the game, shattered by the dismissal of. John Milan and the centre half back comes up to score. Ronan Kern from the bars. One of Cork's most famous clubs. And it's 116 to 210. That's a great catch by Michael Welsh. Waterford need a couple of steadying scores. They're still very much in it. Owen McGrath, player of great talent, to Paul Flynn, striking poorly. He's missed a good chance. Yes, he was challenged, but it was still a good chance. Let's take a look at this a little while back there. Michael Welch coming up to take that. David O'Sullivan from the short puck out as we were watching the reprise of that. Back live, it's Ken McGrath. One man who will give the leadership. Outside towards Tony Brown. Loses the stick. Timmy McCarthy was the one who's lost it. Broken stick. Niall McCarthy. Looking for a way through, they forced wide. Never really controlled that terribly well, right. the man from Carrick Tool. He caught that ball three times as well. I think the Waterford players are getting a little bit frustrated, maybe reckon some of the frees aren't going their way. Cork with six wides now at this stage, but they still have the lead. 116, 19 points, 210, 16 points. Free in. Waterford's free. Dan Milan feeling his hand. Ronan Curran, that was some spectacular score by Curran. But then he was given a bit too much latitude. And Ben O'Connor being attended to in there by Declan O'Sullivan from Blackrock, the physio. That's gone wide. It's a horrible opening. 12 minutes to the second half for Waterford. Paul Flynn with the miss there. Waterford with 12 wides now. Far, far too many. They need a lift from somewhere. 
Cork trying to consolidate. Ben O'Connor, their captain this year. It drops short, Brenner taking it into his chest. Well, the intensity couldn't continue like we had in the first half, but it'll come again with a bit of luck. Flynn striking, and that's a nice return. Paul Flynn has hit his fourth point. This could be the day that Paul Flynn delivers a victory in this year's championship. Taken off in the last two matches against Clare and Kip, but he's now bagged four points. And in fairness, he's after missing two or three chances, and he showed great leadership there to step up and hit a great score for that. Cork are making the extra man count at the back. Ronan Curran now coming in for a pop, and he has put it wide. That's real wastage, and I'm sure that some of the forwards inside, in particular Brian Cork, is probably saying, give us a chance. This is what happens though, when, when you're playing with a strong wind, you tend to go for those long-range speculative shots, you know. But Ronan Curran has come into the game very much since half-time. Tony Brown. Ken McGrath beautifully taken in his stride. What a player. Oh, there's a tumble there. A collision with Wayne Sherlock there and uh, Owen McGrath. Accidental, but it means a free into Waterford. A little ticking for the number two, Wayne Sherlock. Here it is as he was held back. Again, Owen McGrath is one of those players who really could explode onto the scene at any moment. Paul Flynn about to take it. This to put the minimum between them. Well within his range, it's only about 30 metres out, 35 maybe. Breeze against him. That's over. Good work by Paul Flynn. He knows what has to be done and the fans know, they believe that it's possible. They want to win back the title, the Munster Cup they held in 2002. And right now, Waterford are about to bring on Paul O'Brien, the goal hero against Tipperary last time out. And it's Dave Bennett who's going off. So a rearrangement of the furniture in midfield will be required. And Paul O'Brien from Tullow. Tullow man going in there to left corner forward. Here's Brian Phelan, misses it. Lovely pick-up, great skill here by Ben O'Connor. Two men against him, he lofts it high, the breeze carries it, inside the left-hand post and over! Wonderful score by the richly talented Ben O'Connor. Three points for Ben. 117 to 212. Cork stretch it again. Only 15 minutes into the second half, however. Dan Shanahan bustling, winning the free. It could easily now become a battle of the free takers. Just look at this pickup again here a little while back from Ben O'Connor, and you know what happened next. The referee telling Paul Flint to take it back just a little bit. Well, the last time a referee told a player to take it back from a free, you remember in the Limerick match, it dropped into the goal. Will Limerick ever forget? Flynn goes for a goal, and he's got one! My goodness me! Only Paul Flynn could think of it! 16 minutes into the second half! Amazingly! Cork were expecting him to just lob it over. There's where it finished. Top right-hand corner of the net as we look at it. And Waterford have taken over here, 3-12 to 117. Paul Flynn with 1-5, and there's a player down on the deck. Gavin McCarthy is down. It's the first time that Waterford lead in the match, and the referee is uh, calling across. Well, the umpires have certainly called across the referee, first of all. And it's going to be interesting to see just what happened. Ken McGrath and Garvin McCarthy were the two players involved in the altercation. And what will the referee do here? Waterford are already down to 14 players, and it's a case of what did the umpires tell the ref? We didn't see. We were still looking at the uh, replay of the goal again and again and again. It's only one goal. Now the referee's calling them across. Garvin McCarthy and Ken McGrath. 15-man Cork being led by 14-man Waterford. 
Waterford deserve great credit for the way they've, they've stayed out in the, in the second half, having John Milan probably their best forward all year sent off. They've shown great heart. Whether Paul Finn meant that or not, I don't know. It's 21 points to 20 in Waterford's favour. And I hope you're good at the maths from here on in. I was missing from school the day we were doing counting. I was out with a hamstring injury to my mouth. But we're still there. Only a point in it. Joe Dean, angled shot. Uh, it's good. Joe Dean with his ninth point in this epic monster final. And the teams are level. Level for the first time, can you credit it, since the match started at four o'clock. And it is a match, a real, wonderful, lively championship match in the best spirit of all Ireland and Munster championships. Dropped in there by Tom Kenny, lost by the goalkeeper, lost by everybody. And in the end, it went off the back. And it's a 65. I think the keeper probably touched it last. One eighteen. that is 21 points, 3-9, 21 points. Cork have the extra man, they've had it since the third minute of the second half, but that's about it. Yeah, they're not making great use of it though, Jared. they're playing an awful long ball in over the full forward line and wide, you know, and instead of I think get to play a little bit cuter, move the half forward line out the field a bit and let the ball in in front of Ben O'Connor and Jody and they have to win it again. Ben O'Connor to take this first 65 of the match, just inside the 65 metre line, and that is over the bar. Cork lead again. Ben O'Connor's fourth point. What a contest. Whoever wins here, apart from being Munster champions, they go through right to the All-Ireland semi-finals. And the loser will go into the qualifiers. The draw, which will be made, of course, later on this evening on the Sunday game here before we leave Thurlis. Coming up after this, deferred showing of the Leinster football semi-final. That, of course, between Westmeath and Wexford. And the draw's coming up shortly afterwards. Hurling and football. Great afternoon's entertainment on the Sunday game live. Niall McCarthy on his left-hand side has dropped it to his left, and it's a horrible wide. Just after Cork went a point up from the 65 by Ben O'Connor. He has yet to score, Timmy McCarthy has yet to score. On the Waterford side, Seamus Prendergast and Michael Welch of the starting forwards, they have yet to score. Prendergast under the dropping ball here, he takes it down well. Release to Owen Kelly. The dashing wing forward, that's a great score! They go point for point on an afternoon of magnificent skill and craft. The great old code has been demonstrated to its very best. Watch again as Kelly was left a little bit too much room by Ohio Bean, but enough to get it between the posts. Who's going to get the next one? Ken McGrath trying to bustle his way through. Lots of Cork players there. Brian Phelan nursing it to himself, feeding it forward again towards Owen Kelly, on towards Owen McGrath. McGrath taking a couple of Cork players on. One of them is John Gardner. Roland Kerman is the next one with a challenge. It runs on towards Dan Shannon and runs away. Up again towards Paul O'Brien. There was a bit of a chop down, and the referee says free into Waterford. A chance for Waterford here, only about 30 metres out. Twenty two points against twenty two points. Waterford can go in front now with the striking of Paul Flynn. That's his angle. Donald O'Cusa ready. Just in case he would have the audacity to do what he did a little while back. About five minutes ago. Measuring it up. Flynn going for a point this time. He does the conventional. And Waterford lead. And he's the scorer of a goal and six points, and he could be the day's hero. After a season which carried some disappointments for the great Bally Gunner player. Niall McCarthy is being replaced in the Cork half forward line. And coming on is Jonathan O'Callaghan from Castle Town Roach. John Joe O'Neill country. So a switch by Cork and Ronan Curran holding it up on the half-back line, waiting for the extra man. The extra man is their number three, Dermot O'Sullivan, one-handed forward. Jerry O'Sullivan trying to carry it on. 
by Jerry O'Connor on the trouble carry it on. It runs away here, and it's collected once again by a very alert Ken McGrath. Nicely on here, Seamus Prendergast has support ahead of him. Three or four court players off, but he was a bit ponderous. He needed to get it in faster than that. The third of contrast in style is, from the puck out is, is amazed. Don Lokuzak is looking for the short one all the time. This was some block, but there were two against one. Don Lokuzak's puck out looking for the short one because they can't win the long one. And then, on the other hand, Seamus Prendergast and Dan, Dan Shanahan are winning everything in the air from Seamus Benner's long puck out. With, Great to watch, a super game. What score we're having here? Well, Cork now conceding the freeze to uh, Waterford, whereas Waterford have tightened up at the back. Let's give them credit. 22 and a half minutes, three minutes, 23 minutes into the second half. They've not given away silly close in freeze to Dean. That's a good strike, but it's going right, still in play. Sean Ogo Halpin rises up imperiously, takes it out here to John Gardner. Hooked brilliantly by Prendergast. They're battling water for the 14 men against the 15 of court. Paul Flynn, if at first you uh, don't succeed, try again, and you still might fail. He has. Some game. Well, Flynn has got a couple of great scores, and he's had a few bad wides. I suppose it, that's typical Paul Flynn. 23 to... 22. Oh, Jeremy De Sullivan, what's he doing? Linking up with his goalkeeper. They work it out, the short fuck up, but the referee is uh, whistling up. Oh, now, what's the referee uh, asking them to do? He's given a free out for, for what I don't know. This is uh, John Gardner. There was a hoop there by Seamus Prendergast. Well, Nothing that I saw. Let's check on it later. Anyway, it results in a free to Cork. 20 metres from their own goal. Dermot O'Sullivan, the taker. 23 points to 22. Waterford lead this, and they're in the attack again. Dermot O'Sullivan bats it outside. Ronan Curran. Down it goes nicely. Jonathan O'Callaghan, the new man in, can he make a difference? He's in there against Brian Phelan as Garvin McCarthy has gone into the 40, and that's going to be a free to Waterford. They've weathered something of a storm. Watch it again here, O'Callaghan. He was being dragged around, but the referee says steps taken, and it's going to be a free to Waterford. And now vital decisions are going against Cork and going Waterford's way. Ken McGrath inside his own 65 in the beautiful sunshine of Thurless. They were belting on that one. Oh, McGrath missed it, but it comes back to Paul Flynn. Quick as you like, nice as you like, but he's put it wide on this side of the field, and I'm sure all over they thought it was over the bar. Live on their nerves, ten minutes to go. Does either side deserve to lose? I think Waterford should be further ahead. Paul Flynn has missed maybe four or five good chances there in the second half. They're all over Cork now. It's a great spell for them. They've shown character and resilience. McGrath dropping it in. O'Brien was waiting. Still has the opportunity, uh, Paul O'Brien. Outside to Paul Flynn. Aware that he was about to be challenged. That looks OK. It's good enough to kill out and end. It's got over the bar. Paul Flynn strikes it brilliantly. By that's my tally, it's a goal in seven for Paul Flynn. That's what makes him the genius that he is. Simple ball in front of the goal is just a minute to go. Next thing, he's out on the sideline, but he's back to the goal and he puts it over. You've got to credit his manager, Justin McCarthy, I think really put it up to him in the last couple of matches, saying, you can produce, now don't hide any longer, go and do it. He's yeah, doing it. I think he deserves all the credit. If, if Watford want to win this game, he's the man that will have done it for them. Absolutely. Ken McGraw misses. Garvin McCarthy trying to scoop it up to himself. Michael Welch... Ken McGraw, fresh air puck, Garvin McCarthy's after it, Tom Kenny's there as well. And it's won by Waterford's Michael Welch, getting it out here to Owen McGraw. The shoulder there by Gardner on Seamus Prendergast. Good work by Prendergast, Cork dropping back, losing their intensity a bit. Now they need a lift. Michael Welch, Welch going forward, has support inside, it's Owen McGraw. Run into a stiff challenge from Dermot O'Sullivan. The referee says play on. It was a well-executed shoulder. Comes out here into the centre. They get it away. Further out of trouble. That was uh, Jerry O'Connor. Back to his brother Ben. Back to Jerry O'Connor again. The twins combine. Newton Chandra together. And together 
with a lovely score. And it's Jerry O'Connor's second point. A point that will be cheered all over Cork and further afield, you can be certain. I don't think we'll see a better score this year. It's, it's what they did all year with Newton Chandram, playing the one two. Two from two for Jerry O'Connor. Waterford leading by a point still. Ronan Curran. Brian Corcoran just slipped that time. He's not in the match as much in the second half. Didn't get a good supply of ball. Here he is challenging. James Murray. They've tried to work it away through Declan Prendergast. Oh, it's a bad ball into the centre. The one man you don't want to give it to. Jerry O'Connor has got a great engine. Joe Dean came that time off the legs of Owen Kelly. What a match. How will it finish? Referee's going to blow the ball up. I'll blow it up and throw the ball in. Seven minutes to go of a pulsating Munster hurling final. The Leinster hurling final, of course, coming up next Sunday, and Michael Dyglund alongside me will have a big interest there. Offaly against Wexford. How are the preparations going there? Not too bad, Jeremy. I tell you, it'll be hard for the people who are watching here today. What a game of hurling down in Torres. If we can get the game half as good next Sunday, we'll be doing well. Well, that'll be live in the Sunday game as well. Brian Phelan getting the attention. Let's have a look at the possession stats. And Waterford, six percentage points better off than Cork. And after uh, 28 minutes of the second half. Full credit to both teams. A wonderful contest. Shamie Hannan there alongside Justin McCarthy. The other selectors, of course, as well. We heard Nicky Cashin talking to Tony O'Donoghue at halftime. Kevin Ryan and Jerry Fitzpatrick, their physical trainer as Cork prepared to bring on Kieran Murphy from Sarsfields. So a second for Sarsfields player involved, but he's replacing his clubmate Garvin McCarthy. Referee to throw the ball in. On my watch, six minutes of the 70 to go. Waterford just shading it. Prendergast. And the referee there saw a bit of pushing and he's given the free to Cork. Sean O'Gohalpine fired up. The wide so far, Waterford have uh, been more profligate with 14 against 8 for Cork. Wasted opportunities. Oof. He is laying down the law. Who can blame him? Great-hearted player. And they're in the square already, and it's going to be a free out. John Gardner struck that, but they were waiting inside. Will it be a disappointing day for John? Will they have to settle for the qualifiers? It's still very, very tight. You daren't take your eyes off this. Shane O'Sullivan is going to come in. Owen McGrath is the player who has come off the Waterford team. It's 24 points to 23. Waterford leading by just one. Cork with possession. Five minutes to go of the 115th Munster Hurling final. And gradually, Justin McCarthy has been building up a good panel of players. It's not just 15 or 16 or anymore. He's got at least 20, 21 men who can come in and do a right good job. Sean O'Gohalpine from the Piershig in Cork. Down towards Brian Corker, and he just runs away from him. Whoops. Nearly injured himself by colliding with the advertising hoarding and the uh, structures at the end there. But right. that's another opportunity of possession wasted by the men in red. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see, you know, what have had to put in a huge effort physically to stay in this game. What, is, what has it taken out of him? Jerry O'Connor is one man I'd be afraid of from a court, from a point of view. He's a great engine on him and he's going to run all day. Timmy McCarthy looking to try and level it. He's put it wide. Well, it was a great chance for Timmy McCarthy. Hasn't scored in the game, and what a time that would have been to tie it up. Four minutes left. Well, Seamus Brenner has to look for his big men with the puck outs. He put Tony Brown under pressure there, and he put the last one out over the line. He needs to play Seamus Prendergast and Dan Shanahan in the air. The meeting of the champions in Munster of the last two years.
vital possession here now for both teams. It runs on towards Waterford and one back by Cork. And the man who is dominating the exchanges right now, Jerry O'Connor to Jonathan O'Callaghan. Towards Timmy McCarthy, Tony Brown's alongside him, but minding the house, being very vigilant as ever is Ken McGrath. Looking around and spotting Owen Murphy, loose, nobody marking him. Dean had got away from him. It's one back by Sean O'Halpine. Who's going to win it if there's going to be a winner today? Wayne Sherlock down towards Timmy McCarthy, won by Tony Brown of Waterford. One of the greatest monster finals I've seen. Huge one, stopped by Diomedo Sullivan. Great ball down, testing the defence. Spills loose, Cork have it. An opportunity, Jerry O'Connor was trying to go through, and it's away, and the opportunity fell there at this moment to go to Kieran Murphy. And Waterford have it back, and it's up there with Seamus Prendergast. Two minutes to go as Prendergast lets fly. It's high, it's over! What a point! Seamus Prendergast, his first point of the day. Two points the margin, and one minute of additional time to be played at the end of the 70. Cork go back into the attack. And that one is dropped over the bar by Tom Kenny. We're back to a one-point game with Kenny's third accurate strike for a point. 316, 121, 25 points to 24. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed that the maths are right. Owen Kelly is out on his feet in the middle of the field and Jerry O'Connor is running into all sorts of positions. He was straight in for a goal there except for a bit of luck. Owen Kelly has to stay close to him. Brian Phelan belting it forward. Survival now here. Victory is within the grasp of both teams. It's going to be an awful game to lose and a fantastic, fantastic victory for the winner. Cork are making a late change. John Gardner is going off. Coming on for Cork is Kean O'Connor from Aaron's own. That's uh, Brian Corcoran's club. Coming close to the end of the 70. Waterford still hanging on by a point. 25 24, and Waterford have a free. And the Waterford subs are on the side of the field. The fans are on their feet. They believe that finally they can end a hoodoo which has lasted 45 years since they last beat Cork in the Munster final. The champions of 2002 are close, but they're up against the battlers and the champions of 2003. Dan Shanahan taking on Sean Ogohalpine. You won't find better sport or better drama anywhere today on any network, wherever you go. The homegrown stars of top-class hurling in action in Semple Stadium. We're in injury time, 30 seconds to go, Waterford leading by a point. Waterford attacking, pressure on Wayne Sherlock. Cork have got to try and score here. First of all, they need to get the ball down to Ronan Curran. The referee has a look at the watch, says play on. Ken McGrath makes a fantastic catch. That could be a match winner on its own for the 14 men of Waterford. What a day, what a match. If the rest of the season is half as good, stand by for the fireworks between now and the end of September. Well, Hurling has needed this game, Jared. It's been a lacklustre enough summer so far, but what a game. And if Watford hang on and win this, I think it'll go down as probably their greatest win. They've been around for the last six or seven years, but to lose their best forward, John Milan, so early in the second half, to show great heart and determination, and all credit to them. They're close, the fans know it. Jack Kennedy has just come in as a late switch there. The 14 men have a free. Paul Flynn, whose goal was so important, drops it in, saved by Sean O'Mahalpine, and that is it! Waterford have won the Munster Hurling Final for 2004 by just a point in as fine a game as you're ever likely to witness. The winners in 2002 have been the, beaten the victors of 2003. Two championship wins for Justin McCarthy and his squad in three seasons. Two out of three ain't bad. What a day for Daisha Hurling. What a day for sport.